chapter five doesn't play nicely with others or what are old people good for anyway is written from my point of view as a seven-year-old back in 1953 when all my elderly relatives were about as spooky and scary seeming as uh, Hollywood gangsters and monsters and villains. They didn't look good. So I start this one off with a little stream of consciousness poem and then I jump into the story. Old people coming out of the woodwork. Old codgers doing the stiff-legged zombie shuffle around pot-bellied stoves. Old crones Sagging nylons rolled down, one just below the knee and the other like some deflated inner tube draped around an ankle. Methuselahs, dozing in bib overalls, jerked about in their rocking chair dreams like sleeping hounds reliving dog fights. All the time telling you stuff you don't want to hear. Don't they know how scary looking they are? How did they ever get so old? The walking dead. Smelling funny. Old relatives. Now, chapter five is about going to visit my Aunt Nellie and Uncle Lauren. And um, just kind of a typical visit to the elderly, I guess. No wonder I hate Sundays, and oh, do I ever, having to dress up, wasting half the day at the church, visiting smelly, scary old relatives, not being allowed to go to the movies. Yeah, that's another sin that's not a sin Monday through Saturday. See, these are the kinds of rules mom dreams up. Sure. Go to a movie on Friday night. That's okay. It's just entertainment. But just don't go to that same film on Sunday because then it's a sin. And you'll be damned for all eternity if you do that. Oh, and go ahead. Gun down a hundred bad guys Monday after school, but God will toast your soul like a melted marshmallow on a stick if you even think about ridding the world of Black Bart on the Sabbath. Go figure. At Aunt Nellie's, we have to check our weapons out on the porch. As always, it's spooky dark inside with Nellie ensconced at her kitchen table and Uncle Lauren, the taxidermized exhibit, still right there in the old kitchen rocking chair where we left him last month. Aunt Nellie is larger than life. A big woman, all flab. Uncle Lauren's a desiccated husk. Nellie's looking at us hungrily with her one good eye. I'm thinking her other eye is what they call a wall eye, since it's always pointed off toward the wall on your right. Lauren's eyes look to be the last thing in him left alive, like the mouse that the rat trap just killed. Coming inside, we pass too close to Aunt Nellie. Denny leaps aside just in the nick of time, but ah! She bulldogs me around the neck and shoulders and drags me up into the deadly lair of her lap. Oh, don't Uncle Lauren's eyes just sparkle with vicarious fun at that. He's like some old leftover silent movie actor he is. Nellie has python torso arms. I can't get away. She gathers me further up until I'm face to face with her octopus eye. God, her breath is bad. Look at you, she crows. Just look it. Look at how you growed. I can't speak. She squeezed every last air molecule out of my toothpaste tube lungs. If I could, though, I'd say, okay, let me go so I can run right off into the bathroom mirror and look at how I growed. But that ain't happening. Then her eye locks onto 
Denny, safely hugging the room's furthest dark corner now, like he's some dessert tantalizingly just out of reach. You boys, she says, licking her lips. You boys, I bet you you like to wrestle. Uh-oh, Uncle Lauren's eyes heartily approve of where this conversation's going. My brain, the only organ besides my ears that hasn't shut down at this point, informs me that by wrestle, she actually means wrestle, which strikes fear in my heart. I mean, what's she going to do? Lock us in a pen together and have us wrestle it out for Uncle Lauren's entertainment? I managed to shake my head. No. Of course you do. You're boys, ain't you? All boys likes to wrestle. All right. I'm a girl then. Just let me go. Hey, anybody noticing I'm drowning here? Just seconds before I pass over to the other side, she, yes, releases her grip. Down I plop onto the floorboards, a, delated, a deflated balloon now, wheezing in air like an industrial vacuum cleaner. The conversation is apparently moving on to the subject of all our other ancient, crazy, smelly relatives living out their zombie lives in various parts of the state of Maine, which seems to be crawling with them. It's the distraction I've been waiting for. I begin inchworming myself out of harm's reach as unnoticeably as I can manage. To Denny, I mouth that it's time to go outside. I need some fresh air.